Jensen Wang, CEO of NVIDIA and Mark Zuckerberg of Meta, were the keynote speakers on the opening day at SIGGRAPH 2024. Jensen Wang had a long chat with a reporter from Wired magazine. Then he sat and exchanged notes with Mark Zuckerberg. In both chats, the topics included an overview of the history of computer graphic, new products and service development, evolution of LLMs, and what's next in generative AI. We focused on what's next in generative AI. Take a listen. Well, uh, the big breakthrough of ChatGPT uh, was reinforcement learning human feedback, which was uh, the way of using humans to produce the right answers or the best answers to align the AI on our core values or align our AI on the skills that we would like it to perform. That's probably the, just the extraordinary breakthrough that made it possible for them to open ChatGPT for everyone to, everyone to use. Other breakthroughs have, have uh, arrived since then. Guard railing, which, uh, which causes the AI to focus its energy or focus its response in a particular domain so that uh, it doesn't wander off and pontificate about all kinds of stuff that you ask it about. It would only focus on the things that it's been trained to do, aligned to perform, and um, uh, that it, it has deep knowledge in. The third, the third breakthrough is called uh, retrieval augmented generation, which basically is vectorized or data that has been uh, embedded so that we understand the meaning of that data. Mm -hmm. And so, it's a more authoritative data set. It's it goes beyond just right. the trained data set, and that's it actually right. pulls from other sources. That's right. It's so not just pre-trained data be, source. Right. It's and something, you know, for example, uh, it might be uh, all of the articles that you've ever written, all of the papers that you've ever written. And so now it becomes uh, something, a, an AI that's authoritative on your, uh, and it could be essentially a, uh, a chatbot of you. Uh, so everything that I've ever written or ever said could be vectorized and then create it into a semantic database. And then before an AI responds, it would, uh, figure, it would look, at, look at your prompt and it would, uh, it would uh, search uh, the appropriate content from that vector database and then augment it um, uh, in its gener generative process. Only uses their data. So this only uses all of the data that's available on Shutterstock uh, that they have, have the rights to, to use to train. And so we now use prompt generated 3D. We put that in Omniverse. Omniverse, uh, as you know, is a, is a place where you could compose uh, uh, data and content from a lot of different modalities. It could be 3D, it could be AI, it could be uh, animation, it could be materials. And so we use Omniverse to compose all of these multimodality uh, data, and now you can control it. You could, you could change the pose, you could change the placement, you could change whatever you like. And then you use that image out of Omniverse to condition the prompt. Okay, so you take what comes out of Omniverse, you now augment it with the prompt. It's a little bit like augment, retrieval augmented generation. This is now 3D augmented generation. Getty, uh, the edified model is multimodal, so it understands the image, understands the prompt, and it uses it in combination to create a new image. So now this is a controlled image. And so this way, we can use uh, generative AI as a, as a collaborator, as a, you know, as a partner to, to work with us, um, and uh, uh, we can generate images exactly the way we like it. Um, so the ranking was, was important, but now over the last few years, it's gotten to a point where more of that stuff is, um, is just different public content that's out there. The recommendation systems are super important because now instead of just a few hundred or thousand potential candidate posts from friends, um, there's millions of, of, of pieces of content and that turns into like a really interesting recommendation problem. And with generative AI, um, I think we're going to quickly move into this zone where not only is, is the majority of the content you know, that you see today on Instagram, you know, just recommended to you from kind of stuff that's out there in the world that matches your interests and whether or not you follow the people. I think in the future, a lot of this stuff is going to be created with these tools too. Some of that is going to be creators using the tools to create new content. Some of it, I think, eventually is going to be content that's either created on the fly for you um, or, or, or kind of pulled together and synthesized through different things that are out there. So I think that that's just one example of how kind of the core part of what we're doing is just going to evolve. And it's been evolving for, for 20 years already. But I, the, a lot of the Gen AI stuff is going to 
on the one hand, it's, I think, going to just be this big upgrade for all of the workflows and products that we've had for a long time. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, there's going to be all these completely new things that can now get created. So meta AI, um, you know, the, the idea of having you know, just an, an AI assistant that can help you with different tasks and um, in, in our world is going to be you know, very creatively oriented, like you're saying. But, um, but I mean, they're very general. So I mean, you don't need to just constrain it to that. It'll be able to answer any question. Um, over time, I think, you know, when we move from like the Llama 3 class of models to Llama 4 and beyond, it's, um, it's going to, I think, feel less like a chatbot, where it's like you, you give it a, a, a prompt, and it just responds. And then you give it a prompt, and it responds. And it's just like back and forth. I think it's going to pretty quickly evolve to you give it an intent, and it actually can go away on multiple time frames. And I mean, it probably should acknowledge that you gave it an intent up front. But I mean, you know, some of the stuff I think will end up, you know, it'll spin up, you know, compute jobs that take, you know, weeks or months or something, and then just come back to you when like something happens in the world. And I think that that's going to be really powerful. So I mean, I'm, today's I'm AI, as you that. as you know, is kind of turn based. You say something, it says something back to you. Um, but obviously, when we think, when we're given a mission or we're giving a problem, you know, we'll, we'll contemplate multiple options, or maybe we come up with a, you know, a tree of options, a decision tree, and we walk down to the decision tree, simulating in our mind, you know, what are the different outcomes of each decision that we could have potentially make, and so we we're doing planning, and so in the future, AIs will will kind of do the same.